Hello everyone once again and welcome back to ESC Fan TV. It's your favorite Dane Niklas back again and I am here to take a look at the nine competing songs in this year's Dansk Melodi Grand Prix semi-final. So this year DR have decided to do something new with the Dansk Melodi Grand Prix format and they've introduced what I like to call a radio semi-final. The idea with this semi-final is that these nine songs, they call them bubbles, that have been released today are going to be played on the P4 radio station all throughout this week. And it is then up to the listeners at home to pick three songs that will go directly to the final of Dance Moody Grand Prix, which is being held in Royal Arena in Copenhagen on the 7th of March. Now, actually, five songs will be going through from this semi-final. Three of those will be picked by the public, and another two will be picked by the regional judges that have decided which nine songs should be in this competition. They will be given like a wild card vote. Now, the vote is a little bit different than what we expected, and I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can. Basically, the contest is divided into three regions where each of these regions has like a few Danish regions in it. These regions are based on the regional parts of the P4 radio station. Three songs have been chosen for each region and the three songs actually have like singers that come from that region. So there is a reason they've been put like that. And depending on which region of the Kingdom of Denmark you live in, you have the chance to decide from three songs which one you would like to go through. Did that make sense? I hope it made sense. Anyway, I'm going to give you my thoughts on all these songs and I'm gonna look at them like through these different duels. So we're gonna start out with the first three songs and the first duel, which is the South region of Denmark. And the first one on the list we have is Jamie Talbot with the song Bye Bye Heaven. <laughs> Now this I think is a very nice mid-tempo song. I don't necessarily think this is going to be the big winner on the 7th of March, but that being said, this is one of my favorites. I think it has a nice contemporary feel. I think Jamie sings it well. Jamie was on X Factor here in Denmark a couple years ago, and I think he came second. He's definitely a great vocalist and can do a lot of great things. He's a great performer as well, so I have no doubts that he can pull this song off live. I mean, it has been a couple years since he participated in the X Factor, so I wouldn't say he's like much of a household name in Denmark anymore, but I'm sure there are going to be a few people who will remember him and possibly vote for him because of that. And I think it deserves to be there, you know? I think it deserves to be at the actual final. I want to see this live. I want to see how he could elevate this, especially because like this year we're introducing like a live orchestra back in Dance Music and I'm excited to see how the arrangement of this would be done live. So there's a lot to look forward to and I could see this doing okay well at Dansk Melodi Grand Prix. Next up, we have Kenny Duolon and the song Forget It All. When I'm with you, I forget my flaws, I forget my broken parts. Been... This is another one of those like cool male songs. I will, however, say that upon like listening to these two songs back to back, not only does Kenny and Jamie's song sound very similar in kind of style, vocal style especially, but I'm also already tired of the whole like male falsetto. I know we're gonna get a lot of it at Eurovision this year, or at least in the national finals, just because of Duncan Lawrence's win, of course. But that being said, putting these two songs up against each other, I kind of feel like it's a shame. I get it because, you know, these two people are from the same region, they have to be put in this duel, but it is a bit of a shame because I do feel like these two songs cancel each other out. That being said, I think the song is really cool. I love the like little drum and bass kind of vibes that the instruments still have. I'm interested to see how this would be done live because these kind of drum and bass elements are usually really hard to like do live because it is so like fast paced and the cameras can't always keep up, but I'm excited to see how they do it if this goes through. While Jamie is my favorite out of these two, it seems like this is one of those that are highly rated within the Eurovision fandom and I can expect some of you guys who has listened to these songs have this as one of your favorites so I wouldn't be mad if this got through I think it's a great song and the final in this duel we have Nick Jones and the song 2 a.m. Yeah, this is one of those songs where I barely even remember it. Like, I know I've listened to it this morning, but I don't remember much of it. It's a very typical song. It's a cute little, like, guitar boy with a cute little guitar song. I get it, but especially in this duel where he's, like, at the end of these, like, two 
great vocalists and really powerful songs, this one just doesn't stand out. And if you have to pick between these three songs, it's the only three you're hearing because it's the only ones you can vote for. This one will just be forgotten. And it's not necessarily because it's a bad song, it's just because it just isn't as strong as the other two entries. That's the first duel, that's the South region. Now who would I pick in this region? I've already kind of like went into it. Jamie Talbot is my winner out of these three. This is a song that I think could be the best live and yeah, I'm excited to see how it goes. I could imagine that Kenny is the one going through, but I think there is a good chance that Jamie could get a wild card. So maybe we'll see them both, I don't know. Let's move on to the next region, which is the East region. And the first challenger in this duel is Sam Sarah and the song For You. For you. Now this sounds very much like a typical Scandinavian Melodie Grand Prix song. I'm not gonna sit here and bash it. I'm sure some of you expect me to kind of bash it when I introduce it like that because we all know how I feel about songs like, for example, Higher Ground. But that being said, I think this is kind of cool and I think there is a great chance this will get through. Either it'll be the pick of the public or it'll get a wild card. Simply because it just sounds like a song that fits into Dance Melodie Grand Prix. Now this song is co-written by Chief One and Remy, who also worked on Should Have Known Better, our entry from 2012, and I think that's the better entry. I personally liked Should Have Known Better, and I think it should have done better. Should have done better. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. This isn't really for me. It doesn't stand out for me. I feel like we've heard so many of these songs that sounds exactly like this. But that being said, I could see it have a place in Dance Moody Grand Prix, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one got through. Next up on our list, we have Søren Ockholm and the song Impossible Dreamers. Shut up. definitely a very modern song. I could see this, I mean, the whole thing with these, with this semi-final is that these songs are getting played on the radio and I can imagine hearing this on the radio station, it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel out of place. This is very modern, it's very Ed Sheeran, I kind of called it in my notes, I call it the Danish Ed Sheeran because he has a little bit of that sound and it is a little bit of that style, which, I mean, you can't argue that that style is popular at the moment, so for that reason I could see it doing well, but again, this is kind of one of those songs that sandwiched in between two entries that could be strong for other reasons and for that reason I feel like it falls a little bit flat. I also feel like you know we've heard so many of these like Ed Sheeran, Shawn Mendes kind of songs over the years and I feel like none of them have done particularly well at any of like the national finals so I mean except for of course that uh, time that uh, Anton Hockman uh, beat out Loreen which I'm sure some of you are still not over so I apologize for bringing that up. But that being said, no, I don't think this will go through necessarily. It could be a wildcat entry just because it is one of those that's like really inoffensive and really modern, but it's not, it's not one to watch, I wouldn't say at least. But now let's move on to the third and final song of this duel, which is Ben and Tan and the song Yes. And I am going to say yes to this song, very much indeed. Now this song is co-written by Jimmy Janssen and Linnea Depp, and you can definitely tell this has that like Swedish pop feel to it. That being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, I feel like this is actually the best out of these nine songs that we've heard so far. Obviously we don't know like what we can expect from the five other songs that have been pre-qualified for the final, but if we just go by the quality of these nine songs, this is definitely our best pick for Rotterdam so far. This is fun, it's modern, it's great. I think we need more of these like male-female duos at Eurovision. It's written by two people who definitely know what they're doing when it comes to these types of songs. I know we've talked a lot about Laurel Barker on this channel lately, but I want to give a big shout out to Linnea Depp. I think she writes some great songs and I think it's fun to see her taking part. I think this is the first time she's written a song for Dance Me Dugan, so that's really fun to see. Benjamin and Tanu who are singing this song, they were both on the most recent edition of X Factor. Benjamin was singing solo while Tenno was part of a group called Echo. She auditioned as a solo artist but was put in a group together with I believe four other girls. Both of these are absolutely fantastic vocalists. They're great performers and I can imagine they have great chemistry together having been on the same season of X Factor and knowing each other from there. And they've got a great personality and charisma. So 
I would love to see this live, and I think if this doesn't get through, it's a crime. Possibly the biggest crime we've had this Eurovision season so far. Because this absolutely deserves to be in the live final, and I would even say that it deserves to be in Rotterdam. It's just really fun, really great, and I've been bobbing along to this song all day. So I think the next part doesn't really need much explanation. Which of these songs would I like to see go through this region's final? That is, of course, the song Yes. I think this is our best choice. I can see like one of the two other songs being picked through a wild card and I would be totally fine with that, but this is the one to beat in my opinion. Not only this duel, but for all the songs. And finally, we're gonna go to the northern region of Denmark, and this is actually the region where I can vote. So this is where I've cast my vote, and that probably does mean that I've looked a little bit more into these songs, but we'll see. Now, first of all, we're gonna go to the first and only Danish song that we've heard so far. There can be more Danish songs than the five that we haven't heard yet that are pre-qualified, but out of these nine, we only have one song in Danish. And that's Emil, with the song Vil Ønske Jeg Havde for jeg længes efter svar, kan du må se mig oppe fra? This is a really sweet song. It has these like lovely folk vibe, which is, I don't know like how big this kind of genre of music is like a crush Europe at the moment, but I know here in Denmark, this is a kind of music that is actually quite popular at the moment. And I can see this being played on the radio. I think it fits in very nicely. Also a little fun thing to notice that this song has been co-written by people like Espen Svein and Tim Sko, who some may know as two of the people from A Friend in London, who performed the the song New Tomorrow at Eurovision in Düsseldorf back in 2011. So the song is definitely in good hands and I think it's nice to have a song in Danish, you know? The more and more years we go and the more and more we see like this whole international appeal, the more and more we lose these Danish songs and that's going to be and I think it's a shame because sometimes these can actually be the best songs. This is sweet, it's lovely, you can obviously get behind the lyrics as you get everything, it's very Danish. Maybe a little bit too Danish for Eurovision, I couldn't really imagine this like being rewritten in English and really working, but it's a very nice song and once again I do feel like this one deserves to be in the final. Next up, we have Senda Sanctious and the song Screens. Staring at the screens, staring at the screens. I see a lot of people liking this song as well, and I totally get it. It's a modern electronic song. It talks about like social media, so I'm sure there's a lot of people who can relate to this song. I think it could have a really cool staging. It could possibly be one of the most experimental of these songs because Santa definitely seems like the more like experimental artist out of these bunch. So we could potentially see something cool, maybe something in the style of kind of like what Sigmund did last year at Dance Mundi Grand Prix. But that being said, yeah, the song does feel a little bit flat. It's cool, but I don't really feel like the chorus goes anywhere. I'm not too interested in this song, and I will also say, even though this is the uh, duel that I'm voting in, I do feel like this is the weakest of them, because I feel like all these three songs have some sort of like element of falling a little bit flat, which is a shame. So I don't really see like any wildcard entries coming from this bunch, but yeah, it is a little bit hard to say which song would go through, but I think Santa has a great chance of winning this duel, even though it may not be my favorite. And finally, we come to the very last of the nine competing songs in the semi-final. We have Mia Lu and the song We Could Be So Beautiful. And here it is, a generic female ballad. We needed one of those. We couldn't go through like a whole show without that, right? I mean, I know there are ballad fans out there and I know there are people who absolutely adore this type of music and I'm not gonna sit here or stand here for that matter and bash them because I'm sure this is a song for a very certain type of people. I could see people loving this song because it is a sweet, well-performed female ballad. That being said, there's nothing new or interesting in this song. It has a nice build-up. It definitely goes somewhere and it's not one of those like ballads where you sit back and feel a little bit disappointed. No, no, it definitely goes somewhere and that's why I say that I'm sure the song has an audience and for that reason alone, this could very well be one going through. It just depends on if that audience is in this region of Denmark, which, you know, having lived here for like half a year at this point, I do kind of believe that maybe that is the place for it. So this could go through, but yeah, it's not for me. 
It's just not anything new or anything exciting. It sang very well though. So that being said, which of these is my favorite from this duel and which one did I vote for? It was a little bit hard. I kind of went like back and forth uh, between screens and the Danish song. But in the end, I did chose Meal. And I did that just because I think this is a beautiful song with a beautiful message. And I like this kind of folky vibes. I think it's very nice. It's a very easy, listenable song. And it's one that you can just like sit and relax to. And I think you should support Danish songs when they are there, especially when they are good, because I miss having these like Danish songs in Dance Media and Prime. It's a shame that we are drifting more and more into the English territory, not only here in Denmark, but a lot of countries over Europe. And I really do feel like we should support the efforts that some of these people do put in to still get like some authentic Danish music, which this definitely is. No Swedish songwriters here. So there you go. Those are the nine competing songs in the Danish semi-final. I've already said it. The song Yes is my pick out of all these. I think it's the best song and I would love to see this in Rotterdam. But I think in all in all, there's actually a lot of quality in this. I feel like we've had a couple bad years for Dansk Mardi Grand Prix where it's just kind of like, it's just been going downhill. The viewership has been going down. There hasn't really been like that many aspiring songwriters. But it looks like it's really taken a turn with these like giving more songs, more artists a chance to express themselves and I think it is good that the public has a little bit more of a say on which songs goes through because I am excited or at least interested to see the other five songs that we still have yet to hear because they could be very much the same old same old Dance Mardi Gras songs we've seen for the past couple years and it could just be that DR is just out of touch with what we want. So maybe this kind of semi-final means that we get to see some songs that wouldn't have been selected otherwise and I very much think that a song from this bunch could be the winner just because well we will have already known it we will already heard it before we heard some of the other songs we've already formed an opinion on this before the 7th of march so it'll be interesting to see how it will i mean some of these songs could make or break it live but it's an interesting format i'm excited to see if they're gonna follow up with this uh, in the next couple years or if this will just be a one-year thing but yeah there are some good quality in here and i'm excited to see that the quality of dance media and play has at least gone up a little bit this year it makes me a little bit more hopeful for this decade at least. But anyways, those are just my opinions on the songs. What do you think? We here at ESC Fan TV, as always, would love to hear your opinion. So you're more than welcome to post it down in the comments below. Also, if this is your first time watching an ESC Fan TV video, hello, it's nice to have you here. And we would love for you if you click that little subscribe button down there somewhere so you can keep track on all the shows we do here. Because we do a bunch of like fun live shows. Eurovision season is hitting hard at the moment. We're getting started. We're getting ready. Ready. We have a bunch of songs from all over Europe being released and we're reacting to a bunch of them in our live shows where you can comment and take part in the conversation. You can of course also follow us on both Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all these places. We are ESC Fan TV on all of them. But that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed my little review of the Danish songs. Like I said, let me know which ones are your favorite and we will see you shortly for another fun ESC Fan TV show. Bye-bye.